fires one towards the goal. That's going to be clubbed by Travis Ridgen. Well, this is more like it. This is Slangin' the Biscuit. Here's Travis Ridgen and Dave Wheeler. Early and often. Early and often. Often or often? Often. 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 Right, I got a big tongue and a small mouth. I don't know if you ever noticed that. Okay, well, that big mouth has managed to get to us in a little <laughs> bit of trouble here and there. So <laughs> That's perfectly on brand with this episode. <laughs> Outra- Perfect. Outrageous stories. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm curious to hear how many are from us and how many are just from things overall that we've witnessed. You know what I was disappointed? So I was making notes today for the podcast for these outrageous stories. And I was like, I need some good stories from Sweden. And then I thought, I don't have any from Sweden because everybody behaved. Everybody was very well-mannered. Everything was cool, casual, calm. But I got lots of stories in the past two years. Oh, for and sure. before that. Now, it's interesting because that pretty is pretty much on par with the whole social fabric of Sweden, too. It's a very, very chill. You know what I mean? Like you don't stand out. You don't make any comments about you stand out. You don't, you're don't. you not bigger, larger than life. You're not being selfish. Oh, they're big and large. Those Swedes are big and large. That's for sure. Beautiful big and large. Yeah, but m- males and females. The men, too. Wow, the men. Handsome. Handsome devil. Very Actually, I just had um, a gentleman who I'm trying to remember. I, I don't... I think he's from just outside of the capital, uh, capital, but Ulf Nilsson, who was on the hotline back with Bobby Hall uh, back in the day, was on my show uh, not too long ago. And just what a gentleman. Every time I, I've spoken with him, I've met him, I've shook hands with him, just a gentleman start to finish. And he came on before uh, the Jets got knocked out of the playoffs, so he was uh, still in good spirits. Uh, but yeah, just a lovely gentleman. Actually, almost everyone I've met from the Scandinavian countries, lovely people. You ever go over to Scandinavia? No. Do you want to? Absolutely. I'd love to see this in every corner of this world. Uh, I I haven't left uh, this side of the pond yet. I've gone as far south as Cuba. I've done Jamaica. I've done Mexico. I've done most of the inland United States, but nothing overseas yet. My wife's taking care of a lot of that. I just thought the other day, I was in the shower. You know how like deep thoughts happen in the shower? How like chicks love stories? Mm. Right? Like Women love to hear like a good story. So for example, if I say I play professional hockey, they say, what? NHL team. Oh, it's not quite the NHL. The same way if I told them, let, let's just say I'm not, but if I was in like the Marine Corps or if I was a Navy SEAL or, you know, I was a civilian, oh, and I'm in the military. Oh, the military is the military. There's no world outside of the military. There's no world outside of the NHL. It doesn't matter. It's all the same to them. Sure. I get that. But I, I think sometimes as cool of a story that is, it comes along with a certain stigma. And when, when with some people hear, oh, professional athlete, they all of a sudden write them off as, that guy's a dick. You know what I mean? It kind of comes with the terror. It's like surgeons, arrogant. Pilots, arrogant. It just, it's a stigma that follow, follows them around because it's a very niche profession. So absolutely, you can puff your chest. I mean, the, the, the percentage of people that are surgeons or pilots in this world, very low. Uh, it's a little bit bigger when it comes to playing professional sports, but... Y'all get kind of nailed with that stigma. And then you have the guys like Corey Schneider that are just outstanding. But just because he's an outlier doesn't disprove the, doesn't make it an, ex- just because he's an exception doesn't disprove the rule. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Too many pucks off the head. <laughs> There's no. the brain damage showing right there <laughs> from the video version of the show on YouTube. Jeez, I'm surprised any of them hit you. It looks like most of them have missed you. They usually go through, yeah. <laughs> I, I was telling a, a chick the other day, I was like, man, just right over my head. Story of my career. Totally missed the joke. Missed the punchline, but. I still uh, refer to every time I hear that uh, that metaphor, I think of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, where Rocket's explaining that his species of people uh, don't understand uh, hyperbole. They don't understand metaphor. They they take everything literally. He says most things go over his head. And his first response is, nothing goes over my head. I am too quick. I would catch it. It's like dad humor. It is, but in a clever reverse way. Remember that story I told you a couple weeks ago about like the most cancerous locker room in hockey? Mm. So... I was talking to my agent about that, and one of the guys on the team reached out to him and was like, hey, you know, I saw a Trav's clip about the cancerous locker room. Was, was that about us? Yeah. <laughs> Man, our, our locker room was bad. And the guy telling him that was the guy I was talking about in the, in the clip. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be self-aware, dog. Well, to the point where he went, huh, sounds like us. Looks like us. Smells like us. I'm just going to double check that's us. Hey, is that us? Yeah, I thought so. All right, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're a lot closer to the target than you think, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's the saying? The bomber only gets flack when he's over the target? Well, listen, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. If uh, if one person calls you an a-hole, you can kind of go, ah, I'm with my day. A couple people on the same day call you an a-hole and throughout the day, time to go home, look in the mirror, go, have, have I been an a-hole today or has that been a long-running thing? You know, if enough people point it out to you, you kind of go, 
maybe there's some merit to that. Well, I suck. I'm terrible. I am an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I am. Am I comfortable in this skin? Yes, I am. God, I'm good looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was playing for a team in the Fed, and we just got an outshot. 29 to 3 in the first period. We're only down 2 nothing. It's a miracle. We should be down like 8 nothing. And our coach comes in the locker room, throws his stuff down on the floor, and starts like, you know, like when someone gets really mad, their veins in their neck start popping, he starts like spitting. And so he, he throws his shit down. Come on, boys. We got to go and we want to stab them in the neck. <laughs> and like all, at the room is quiet. You can hear a pin <laughs> drop as he's like screaming. And we're all looking at her like, what did he just say? And he's just going on. Would you let a man come into your house and take your wife? It's quiet. Nobody responds. Would you let them touch your children? Whoa, it's a little bit out of bounds. Would you let him come and take your money? I'm not going to let him. We're going to go up there in the second, and we're going to stab him. <laughs> and at, at this point, I'm like, like I've, I've tucked my head in my chest protector. You know how like some guys, like they can fit their yeah, whole yeah. head? Yeah. I'm tucking it in because I'm trying to hold myself back from laughing because like I'm not playing, right? So it's not my, <laughs> my point to make a comment. But I'm thinking, who says that? Sometimes inspirational speeches will stick out because they're either really good or they're really bad or they're really funny. Do you remember any that were really inspirational where you really feel like there was something that was said where the whole locker room went, yeah, we're yeah, in? I do. I was playing AAA hockey, Winnipeg AAA Hawks. Our coach, he had played in the Western Hockey League, WHL, was drafted in the NHL, I think second or third round by the Capitals, had a couple injuries, ended up ending his career. But he'd always have a saying, was, I played in the dub, I was drafted show boys. respect what I say. Like, he was very arrogant, but he, he was he was deserved. And I remember we were playing a game at uh, Gateway Arena, Gateway, uh, home of the uh, Winnipeg Sharks, Winnipeg Triple A Sharks. They, they don't exist anymore, but they did back then, about 10 years ago. And so we're getting ready for the game. We're in the locker room. Coach comes, and on the video version, you're going to you're gonna love this. He comes, boots the door open, like steel toe boots like this, throws the clipboard down, walks around like he's the cock of the walk. Boys, you see all the birds out there? There are some beautiful women waiting to watch us play. Let's go play some effing hockey, all right? And then he just walked out. <laughs> what a speech. What an inspirational speech. We all looked around at each other like, yeah, like we're 16 years old, right? Like we're, you know, not experienced seasoned gentlemen. We're like, yeah, let's go out and play. Let's go put like eight past them. I I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a story about um, a funny one that I had, and this goes back to, geez, all the way back to Bantam. And the reason why I bring it up is because there's a guy who still works with the Calgary Hitman, and he's a, still a dear friend to this day, and I, I'm sure he's going to be okay with me sharing the story. Uh, his name is Mark Stiles. He was the voice of the Calgary Hitman for a period of time. He was the voice of the Fort McMurray Oil Barons, uh, and he's a broadcasting guy. Soul to the earth, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, handsome devil, too. And because he was in broadcasting and because he was dealing with a bunch of 14- and 15-year-olds, he was very conscious of that. And I remember he came into the locker room one time after we got outshot. I think it was like 15 to 3 in the first period. And we had a big uh, bucket of like juice boxes that, you know, would kind of get passed around and throw them out in intermission for a little sugar rush. And he comes in and he very quietly and he grabs a stick and he kind of has got it like a Gandalf staff and he starts, you know, hitting it around. He's kind of walking around, not saying anything. And then he walks over to the middle of the room where all the juice boxes are and he slams it in the middle and juice flies everywhere. He goes, You guys are playing like poop. Like poop out there. <laughs> like it was a total anchorman moment before anchorman even came out. But we all started giggling. He's like, radio guy doesn't know how to say shit. He's not allowed to say shit. This is me saying poop. This is the funniest stuff ever. <laughs> You're playing like poop out there. Then what poop, happened? Poop mouth, Ron. Poop mouth. Who cleaned up the juice boxes? That's a great question. I think it was a, a combination of people after we went back out on the ice because we didn't have time to clean it up. And goon. Never one, heard of it. One of the well, yeah. <laughs> So for those that don't know, Dave was in the movie. I was in it. He was the sportscaster. I was that guy. It's a regular reference on the show. But when, uh, what was it, Laflemme? When he spits on the, on the floor in the logo. Oh, yeah. And Doug goes and gets the towel, and he's like, I got it. Yeah. And he wipes it up. Cleans it off. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's an interesting rule. Actually, Brock Lesnar, it was funny. Bro Brock Lesnar was touring the Jets locker room because he actually lives out in uh, Saskatchewan. He's a big hunter now. Uh, former UFC guy, former WWE guy. And uh, they were taking him for a tour. And he's he's a very folksy northern state. He's like, oh, hey, how's she, how's she going, boys? Like, sounds like he's out of the show Fargo, right? And they were giving him a tour of the arena and, and the underground of the dressing room and everything. And he was stepping on, on the logo, but nobody was going to say anything to Brock Lesnar. It's like, hey, excuse me, Mr. Giant, please don't squeeze my hat off, but you're sitting on our logo. Finally, I think it was one of the rink guys is like from like the backfire. He's like, 
Hey, Brock, if you could just step off the logo, he's like, oh, geez, look at that. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, sorry, sorry. I didn't even know it, but that's that's a pretty big rule. Remember when him and Dustin Bufflin got a picture together? Yeah. Buff looks so tiny. Yep. Lesnar is a unit. He is a giant human being. And imagine doing with that guy. Man, he was entertaining. I don't care if he was WWE or UFC. He was entertaining every time he stepped in there. It was a good following on uh, TikTok. Is George St. Pierre. You ever see his stuff? GSP, baby, yeah. You see his stuff he's posting all the time? Not lately. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I only use the social media stuff for, for work stuff, so that doesn't necessarily fall in unless he's going back to fight. But uh, I have fond memories of him playing... Um, what, are they, what was I'm trying to... La, Ultimate Fighter? Huh? Ultimate Fighter? No, in, uh, he actually played uh, uh, Barack, uh, Baruch. Uh, he, play, he played a French national in the Captain America movies, which is pretty cool. I did not know that. Yeah. I don't know, he does a lot of like ice bath stuff on TikTok, fighting tips, oh. mental strength stuff. He G- GSP is the man. He is still in top form. He's so wide too. Yeah. His shoulders incredibly wide. Yeah. I, have, I have a thing for shoulders. I, I appreciate a nice wide set of shoulders. And he carries la fleur de lis. Yeah, you can barely understand him. I usually turn the captions on for TikTok <laughs> as well. Like I didn't understand that. Look at the comment <laughs> section. Ah, yes. He was gotcha. a great. He, he was a great represent uh, representation of Canada, and uh, God love him. He. Uh, a lot of people will say GSP put Canada on the map. It's like, well, Wayne Gretzky kind of did that and a lot of other people first. But, you know, sure, when it comes to fighting, sure, we'll take that. Yep. You know the GSP of uh, wallets is? The Ridge Wallet, the greatest wallet in the history of wallets ever to exist. I am now officially a Ridge Wallet owner, and I could not be happier. That thing is awesome. I, what I love about it is that I get, I get to a point with my wallets where you stack something in, and then it stretches out the leather, and then when you take it out, everything's loose and none of your cards stay in. doesn't matter how many cards you have in this thing. It's it's tight all the time. Ridge Wallet is the ultimate everyday carry. They have their Father's Day, Father's Day sale going on right now from May 15th until June 15th. Sleek, stylish, portable, comes with a lifetime warranty. You break it, they'll send you a new one. No questions asked. They have a 90-day return policy. So, again, for if you can find some reason why you didn't like it, you send it back, no questions asked. Ridge is awesome. It's got my goddamn last name on it. I was just going to say, despite the fact that they share a last name, not your actual company. No. I've had a lot of questions about that. That is not my company. It's just a great coincidence that it ended up working out that way. But you can pick a Ridge Wallet up for up to 40% off, I believe, the link in the video description at RidgeWallets.com. Use the promo code in there as well. And get your dad something awesome for Father's Day with their Father's Day sale until June 15th, effective now. And thanks to Ridge Wallets for being the presenting sponsor for today's show. Not even for dad. Even if you have a young man in the house who's, uh, yeah, as mine is, getting close to, you know, like, all right, let's go get you a bank card. Let's go get you a few cards. Let's, you know, get you a key, that kind of stuff. That's a great starter wallet, too. It's a veteran wallet and a great rookie wallet. Or if, like, Dave, you got a paint can in your backyard with a bunch of cash in there, dig it up, and they got a place to put it. You can put it in an actual wallet. That is the last time I tell you where I hide my money. <laughs> Well, before that, the tinfoil hat wasn't working. So. <laughs> it's, under, it's under my uh, Fallout Boy hat that everyone was roasting was me online say, for. You're getting grilled for that hat. I like What's it. What's wrong though. with that hat? I like it. I, I didn't have any complaints. I liked it. Listen, variety is a spice of life. I have a lot of hats. I used to have a lot more hats, and I whittled it down to my favorites. This is actually only comes out of the uh, uh, the hat rack every once in a while. This hat didn't actually even make it to production. If you're on the video version, you'll love this hat. This is a coal hat made out in the West Coast. I know it looks like a an umpire's cap, and that's probably what it was designed for. But this was at a um, a product uh, kind of you know you know when they go those do those big conventions and whatnot and possible products and you know futuristic stuff. Anyways, this came off of that. It was something that they thought about but never actually went through. So this is one of the few that were ever made, and I absolutely love this hat. It's one of my favorites. I again, I think it looks great on you. I think you're one of the few that can pull it off. I can't pull it off. You even you never wear hats though. But okay, look at my head. Look at my. If you're in the video version, look at my face before you stab me in the neck. <laughs> look at my face. <laughs> I don't have the shape to pull that off. You know. You know what my head is shaped for though. A big ass cowboy hat. Listen, that's why they make different shapes. They make different sizes. They make different fits. They make the pro fits. They make the ball caps. They make the short brims, the long brims, the deep hollows, the ten gallons, everything. Just find a hat that works for you. Everyone is capable of wearing a hat. You just give me deja vu. There's this one girl that I dated during my uh, FPHL plane days for a short period of time. She would always bug me because like our salaries were like 125 weeks. She'd be like, hey, Brokey, hey, Brokey. She always oh, bug me about that. That's nice. And I remember I told her, because she had a huge head. I remember she was bugging me for, for being broke. Oh, 125? You making 135 this week? And I said, shut up, watermelon head. She started crying. Oh. Big see, old bucket. Dish it, but can't take it. Wow. You I, meanie. You're such a meanie. I told her. I said, You're going to you get us flagged again. On TikTok? <laughs> I don't know. We got flagged on TikTok the other day. We've been posting clips every single day. If, you're, if you haven't seen us on TikTok or Instagram, or maybe that's where you found the show, you get flagged twice for your uh, two fight clips, like two hockey fight clips. So It wasn't even us fighting. It was somebody else. <laughs> us bare-knuckle brawling in here. Right.
and the mm. old Winnipeg handshake. I said, you know, I said, listen, David, like, listen, you brought that up a, a month or so ago, saying that when you were back in town, that we could go and do some sparring together. But whatever, here you are in the same studio. City's dangerous, man. <laughs> <laughs> the city's dangerous. I sent David a video this morning at six in the morning, so I went to go watch the sunrise this morning for five. And what did you see when you opened that video? Uh, I saw a guy who was doing some very careful urban camping, uh, <laughs> some urban travel, a uh, bicycle f- complete with mattress uh, bungee corded into it. He basically had his whole life on his bike. Specifically, he was pulling a mattress down the road. Yeah. I'll put the video on the video version of the show. He's driving his bike, and he's pulling this, this I would say probably like a queen. Oh, yeah. A queen-size mattress down the road. So you bring your own mattress? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right there. BYOM. <laughs> uh, listen, th- b- being down in Mexico for the time that I was, uh, I I learned very quickly that um, little Vespa scooters and 125 cc motorcycles they can be used as moving trucks if bungee corded correctly. So <laughs> that that wasn't as strange to me as you thought it was. Seeing it in uh, north of the uh, the American border up here in Canada, a little stranger, but uh, there's some people who have some very good balance. I've seen people carry fridges. I've seen people carry a family of seven on a little scooter. It amazed me. It's buzzing around. Crazy. You ever seen a possum carry like it's eight babies on its back? Same thing. Possums are incredible animals. And remind me another time, I'll tell you my possum story. But I know we got bigger fish to fry right now. We got a range of stories. Tell, Tell the possum story. So we were down in Mexico. I had my dog and possums were going through our trash. And so one night I heard the uh, the bags clanging around and the, and the cans and everything. And so I turned on the lights because it was dark out. And I said, okay, Panda, go. And I thought she was going to go get this possum. Then all of a sudden I hear, started hearing yelping, started hearing screaming. And so I turned the light on. It turns out it wasn't a possum, but I saw a snake slithering away. And it jumped up and it popped her right in the lip. And she started foaming at the mouth right away. My wife and I, she's like, what kind of snake was it? I'm like, I don't know. I didn't get enough look at it. She goes, go back out look. I said, not a chance. And so we. <laughs> you Googled, go do it. You're we, disposable. <laughs> right. We Googled everything we could, got her as much water as we could, gave her some sedatives and crossed our fingers and hoped for the best. She woke up the next morning right as rain. So obviously got bit by the non-venomous snake, but you could see the two puncture wounds right in her lip. She was, she was leaking. The highlight of the story was how expendable your wife thought you were in that, that moment in time. <laughs> she's like, go look. Like, listen. I love that dog. But this anaconda don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't want none unless you got fun time. I don't want no smoke from that anaconda outside the bit the 180 pound dog. Yeah. Uh, just when you thought it was a possum. But yeah, possums look like just look like giant rats. They're they're weird looking. They're big. You ever heard of hot laps? Speaking of rats. Brad Marchand, what? No. <laughs> hot laps. Hot laps like like when you're getting bag skated? Or no, hot no. laps when you're at the bar? No, no. Like hockey bag hot laps. You, you've never heard of a hot lap before? Ex- explain. I, there's a bunch of different contexts. I mean, we can do a hot lap around the bar. We can do a hot lap around the mall. We can do a hot lap around the, the rink. Like, what, what are we talking? Okay, so this is one of the things about hockey culture I'm not a specific fan of, and I'll explain why in a second. So hot laps are basically, so we go on for morning skate at 10 or 11. Everybody gets on the ice around 9.50, shoots a puck around, stretch out a little bit. And then at 10, we everybody goes around the center ice circle, quick little stretch, and then we get into practice. But in that time, we say, hey, who's got some hot laps. And the hot laps are, did you get busy last night? Now, the mm. hot laps, you do one, obviously, if, if you're busy last night, but you take your helmet off if you fill in the blank, right? Makes sense? Mm-hmm. I was never a fan of that because I didn't like the idea of, like, showboating it. I always think, like, your private life and your personal life should be personal, not, like, showcase the entire team. But there was this one guy that I played with for a team within the last two years. He, in, in the words of ACDC, a whole lot of woman is what he loved. He loved a whole lot of Rosie. God love him. Like, we'd be on the road, and I remember these, what I could only describe as a quarter pounder with cheese, add bacon and guac at McDonald's, fries, supersized, would walk through the front doors, like big old Betsy, and he, he'd be like happier than a pig, and she'd be like, probably like, yeah, like th- this is Bethany. Hi, Bethany. Hi. God, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Listen, man, different strokes for different folks. Uh, there was a time when I was in college where I went through a, a phase of, of, of short-haired women there was a time where I went through a phase of, you know, girls that wore their 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 jeans above their hips and ble- everyone has their thing and nobody's wrong. As, you, like, as I said before, you got to slay a few dragons to get to your princess. It's a varying degree of yes. No right or wrong answers. Right. Remember that story, though, I told you when one guy who would bring females back to the hotel, ruin it for everybody, and coaches and GM were like, no, guys, we got to stop bringing them to the hotel. So they just went to the parking lot. That was right. the guy. 
That was the guy. I played with a guy once upon a time who enjoyed uh, road trips uh, so he could uh, have some extra uh, fun. And uh, to the point in the dressing room the next day, he would ask the guys in the back saying, how many scratches did, are on my back? And he would deem <laughs> how many scratches, like actual nail marks on his back as whether or not he had a good time the night before or not. That's crazy. Yeah. Again, <laughs> different strokes for different folks. I was always on the mindset, I like my personal life personal. Fair. No need for hot laps. No need for asking the boys how many scratch marks you got in your back. Did you guys ever do the one where you would uh, start off with somebody up in the middle of the room and you say, never have I ever blank? No. And then, no? No. Okay. Like rookie initiations, but. Okay. Which I still don't think were that bad. That reminds me of a story. So I'm playing AAA hockey for the Winnipeg Hawks, and we're traveling out to Prince Albert. And after one of the games, we went to Hooters to eat. And you ever heard of Shoe Check? Right? Shoe Check? Yeah, he was. Uh, he played for the '89 Russian Red Army team. <laughs> no, no, no. So shoe check is when somebody puts like ketchup on your shoe or like something. Like, ah, you know what I mean? Shoe check. Shoe check. check. Shoe Got it. Was yes. checked. Yes. Check the shoe. Got it. And so I had ketchup in my shoe, and so I lost the you know the shoe check. And one of the guys like, you got to go kiss the waitress in the cheek. And so I got it on film. I'm not going to put it on the video version because it's super embarrassing. But I didn't do a very good job at the guy's satisfaction. And you know how cold Prince Albert gets, right up north, northern Saskatchewan. Of course. So we walk outside the Hooters. And the guy's like, okay, you can redeem yourself, Trev. I want you to drop your drawers and park your ass right on that concrete bench right there in the oh, snow no. and hold it for 30 seconds. Oh, no. That's your initiation to the team. Oh, no. It wasn't that bad. Okay, well, listen, I uh, I, I know more and more hazing stuff has come up lately. It's, it's something that makes me uncomfortable because, geez, I, I would tell you stories about my initiation and our hazing rituals that – Holy moly, it would make a whore blush. So <laughs> I, I'm serious. It was per, some pretty gnarly stuff, and at the time it seemed acceptable, and we've now learned that that stuff isn't acceptable. And as and li, listen, outside of the whole letting the rookie go out and take the opening first couple of laps around the ice, in this day and age, anything worse than that is comes down with a very swift penalty. So as much as I would, and I have shared stories in the past, like just uh, personally and on former radio shows, but... Yeah, man, I, I, I'm just afraid that sharing stories like that all of a sudden plants a seed in somebody else who's watching it going, oh, they used to do this back in the day. Let's bring it back. Don't. Do, do, don't. They can live in the past. They can be buried back there. We're good. You can frostbite in your tuchus, too. Say what? You get frostbite, frostbite in your tuchus. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know how that would have uh, landed for getting back on the bus and sitting for a while. It Jeepers. Was, it was minus 35. My ass was red. <laughs> Well, at least they didn't ask you to stick your tongue to a lamp pole or something. Oh, man, I used to do that all the time as a kid. Oh, of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. Goalies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, who is the next sponsor of our show? Team at Manscaped, as yeah. always. The Beard Hedger, the Lawnmower. You see this beard? I faded and tapered it just for the show, just before I walked in. The Lawnmower and the Beard Hedger. The Beard Hedger has a 90 minute battery life, water resistant fade and taper with over 20 different lengths, just the way you like it and the way that I like it. The Lawnmower gets you doctored up for date night. Now, right now, you go to the link in the video description and the promo code BISKIT, B I Z K I T, will get you 20% off and free shipping only from the Team of Manscaped. And thank you, as always, for sponsoring the show, as they have done for the last God knows how long. It's been a while. So thank you to Manscaped. Yeah, shape mine up a little bit too. I'm pretty happy with it. It was getting a little bushy. Why says you need to take it down a little bit, but leave it because it covers a lot of your face. Compliment your hat. Sorry? Compliment your hat. Thanks. You deaf boomer? Compliment. I don't know what it is, man. I don't I, I, you, that, you're, that, you're that gonna ask. big tongue, small mouth thing again. <laughs> Enunciate. Uh, you're going to ask me what? Yeah. Well, After the, I asked you, you were deaf. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? Boomer says what? <laughs> People have been saying that you, uh, you sound like an owl. A what? People have been saying... That you sound like an owl. Who? <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dad. <laughs> I love the line from Wolf of Wall Street. Who? Who? What are you, an owl, Jordan? <laughs> Tell you what, it has reminded me of a story, and we'll wrap on this one. This is a story that uh, I'm not overly proud in sharing. It was a very weak moment for me, but I hope you understand where I'm coming from. It actually has lives in a bit of Winnipeg legend around the uh, the hockey dressing rooms and whatnot. It has been shared a few times. One guy actually approached me saying, is this true? And I went, yeah, it's true. Uh, when I first moved to town in 2003, keep in mind I was 23 years old. I was still in really good shape. I was training. I had just finished up with coaching the uh, AJHL Lloydminster Bla uh, Blazers at the time uh, before they turned into the Lloydminster Bobcats. And so I, I was feeling good. And I thought, you know what? I can still play some high-level hockey. I'm not, I can't play Allen Cup. You know, I'm not looking to play senior hockey, but I still like to play, you know, a very fast, quick game. And so I got hooked up with this team in uh, the Central League. Now, the Central League in Winnipeg is not like the Central League down in the U-Haul, right? That was the old Central League. So it was just, you kind of played out of your neighborhood. It was kind of like a grown-up version of the Manitoba uh, Major Junior Hockey League. 
and it was just good, fast hockey. It was really, really good. Um, I There was a guy on the other team that was big dude. Like, he looked like a big goon. And I was playing defense. And sure enough, we got into a bit of a, you know, in the corner, and everyone's kind of mouthing at each other and whatnot. And I, I opened my big, dumb, fat mouth with my small tongue and big mouth and said, I said, come down my wing again. See what happens. Like, just chin wagging out. Like, come down my wing again. And so... Unbeknownst to most people on the ice, I can't see out of my right eye. And they had me playing uh, right D. And so I was kind of crossing over backwards into the center of the ice because the puck was moving that way. And this guy came down my wing on my right side and at like full on towards me. I didn't see anything coming because I'm looking this way. And it probably didn't look like a sucker punch to anyone who didn't know that I was blind in one eye. But he came out of nowhere and just wha-bam! Like, just completely, I don't know if it was a clothesline or if he punched me or what it was, but he went down, like, he caught me square in the kisser. And I went, all of a sudden, like, my eyes started fluttering, and, and I couldn't see. Like, honestly, like, my, my right eye was open, my left eye was closed, and, I, and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my God, that's it. I'm blind. I'm now blind, blind for the rest of my life. And and I just started, I got into that real panic moment. I'm like, oh, fucking blind, you idiot. <laughs> And then I went down all four of them. I'm like, oh my god, it's over! Oh! And then I opened up both my eyes. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm okay. I can see. Left eye still works. Okay, I'm all right. And then I kind of wiped the tears away and went back to the bench. I'm like, God, I can't believe I just cried on the ice. I thought you were gonna finish with your left e part. It comes over. Dude, stay down. Yeah, no. Get the four. Stay down. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, I ended up skating back to the bench. I took, I think I took a couple of few extra shifts off before I got my collective shit back together. But <laughs> scary moment, man. It was one of the scary. Losing my one eye was one thing. This one was like, oh, my God, you screwed up and you went and had it happen again. And I was, I thought that was it. Well, at least that one doesn't work as is. Oh, whatever. What are the odds of it happening twice, right? You ever thought about getting a glass eye? No, because it's still the real eye. So cosmetically, it's still the real eye. So why would I? The only reason I would get one is if it could be like bionic and it could like scan people and, you know, with a chip in my brain and. And then, then even then, no. I'll come eventually. Maybe a light, a flashlight. Ooh, let's do a flashlight. <laughs> Infrared. Oh, like a laser pointer for cats. Oh, I'd be a huge fun. At you parties. Li- you lying to me? Flashlight comes on? <laughs> It'd be like T2. <laughs> oh, boy. That'd be interesting. I got a couple good stories here to finish, though. Mm. Ever told you the story of Anton Hudobin and the Gucci bedsheets? No. Anton Hudobin is an absolute beauty. So uh, goalie for the Boston Bruins, Dallas Stars, Minnesota Wild. Anaheim Ducks, you name it, played for a lot of teams. Cup final with the uh, Dallas Stars in 2020, which is when I actually heard about the story. Mm. So when uh, Anton Hudobin was playing for the Minnesota Wild, Iowa Wild, so between the American League and NHL, you know, obviously you never knew when you were getting called up. You never knew if you would come back again. So for his living quarters, he would buy like the nicest TV he could get at Walmart and get like a six month warranty. And if he was still with the team on month five, day 29, he'd bring the TV back get a refund, wait a couple hours, go back and get another one so he could always return the TV. He never had to actually keep the TV. And so <laughs> one day he went, goes and buys the new TV, comes back, and then he gets called up to uh, Minnesota. And you get called up, you got to go. There's no hauling stuff around, we'll take care of it later. So he yeah. goes up to Minnesota, and his roommate, he calls me, he's like, hey, uh, Bucky, uh, TV, sell it, and uh, sell everything, but not my Gucci bed sheets. I want the Gucci bed sheets, and you're going to ship them to me. They must have been really good quality. They must have been really nice, like silk, like really nice quality. High thread count. Yeah. What a beauty, Anton Hudobin, the uh, TV return menace. Yeah, man, listen, I, I, it's not a name that gets thrown around a whole lot in the, uh, in the, in the, in the halls of, of, of all-time greats, but, man, he was solid when he was in there. Grand Fear goaltending again with the cup final. Yeah, pretty much. Just make sure you outscore the other team. Literally, don't – well, not even outscore the other team. Don't give up more than the other guy. Right. And Grand Fear made how many millions of dollars doing that? Like, <sighs> Yep. Only I could do that. As long as, as long as you got a good team in front of you, man, score more. Yeah, it's listen. It's the exact opposite of what Mike Ditka said, where he says football wins championships. High, high, high-powered offenses can also do the same. I don't know. The Edmonton Oilers. We'll see. So I got a couple of extra ones that I've heard secondhand. So apparently, when the Coyotes moved from Winnipeg to Phoenix, Nikolai Habibulin would go out in between periods and have a cigarette with the play-by-play announcer. So the play-by-play guy would come from the upper deck, come down. And him and, and the play-by-play guy and Happy Woolen would go for a cigarette in between periods. What a beauty. The guy's getting shelved like 40 a night going so, for darts. So that would be Kurt Kielbeck, and uh, he was actually the play-by-play announcer in the movie Goon, the aforementioned Goon that you mentioned. Same really? guy. That's the same guy. Full circle moment. If that if that story is true, that that would be the guy. Man. Be- because he was the Jets play-by-play guy and then uh, moved down with them to Phoenix for the first couple of years. What a beauty. Yeah. 
Imagine the, the amount of things he's got to do. Being the play-by-play guy, he's like, yeah, you know what? I got five. Let's go for a dart. Play, play-by-play gig's a good gig, man, for sure. I mean, they do it for, what, 20, 30, 40 years? Well, a lot yeah, of guys? Well, let me, yeah, I mean, if, if you're good at it, I'll tell you uh, one thing, though, the way that industry is changing and just w- with the landscape of uh, broadcast and, and journalism and, and trying to keep money tight is – not all, but a lot of teams aren't even flying their play-by-play guys out for road games. What they're doing is they're setting them up in studio with a live feed of the rink audio and the rink cameras. And they'll do play-by-play mixed in with the sound of the arena mm-hmm. with their play-by-play. You know, that reminds me of, so when I was in Mississippi this year, this is a great story. So I guess they wanted to save money because like the year before, they had the play-by-play guy, Nick Rush. He was fantastic. I thought he had the best voice in the league at the time. Um, he would go to all the road games, so he traveled with the team. But then I guess you know this year they decided, you know, let's save a couple of bucks. We need to travel the play-by-play guy, and so they would have these two guys sitting at home watching on the YouTube broadcast, and then they would screen capture that on top of their audio. But as you've seen from some of the Fed streams, it's like someone's filming on an iPhone six, and they'd be in there like, uh, I think they dumped the puck in." Oh, jeez, it, it was tough. Anyways, good place to wrap. Speaking of play-by-play. Well, my name is Travis Ridgen. That's my Dave. name is Dave Wheeler. <laughs> we have names. <laughs> nice are, to meet you. We are legal citizens. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Sling the Biscuit Podcast. We do a new episode every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 in Winnipeg, 9 in Calgary and Saskatoon, and 8, and 8 a.m. in the Pacific Northwest in downtown Vancouver. If you're on the video version, hit subscribe on YouTube. We do new episodes every single Sunday. If you're on the Apple Spotify version, leave a review. We would love to hear what you think. And until then, we'll see you next Sunday.